This is the best opportunity that exists in the world, period, period, period. It's not second, it's not third, it's number one. I'm looking for business builders, I'll be quite honest with you. I'm looking for people that want to retire in the next 10 years. I'm looking for people that want to be frugal and learn how to invest in their team as they grow, not a new pair of Gucci shoes. To connect their entrepreneurial spirit with a product, with a lifestyle, with dreams and aspirations. Make millions and millions and millions of dollars. Whatever the most stolen will If you want it bad enough, you can have it. First step, think positive. So I don't put anything into my head that's going to cause me to be thinking outside my positive world. A reading, I would recommend you start reading your 15 minutes to about a half hour. This is going to be an adventure for you. Hey there, cats and kittens. My name is Alonda Carter, and I am the Recovering Hunbot. I create anti-MLM videos, that's anti-multi-level marketing, and also on occasion, I dip my toes into true crime. But if you think about it, isn't multi-level marketing criminal? Now in this instance, when I say multi-level marketing, I'm referring to direct sales, network marketing, pyramid selling, social selling, anything like that. That video montage that you just saw, that was kind of meant to set the tone. Back in 2004, Dateline did a story on Quickstar. After nearly all Amway distributors switched over to Quickstar, the Quickstar brand was phased out and replaced with Amway Global. I also included some footage of more recent Amway conventions and some footage from Lavelle, which was the MLM Shannon Watts was part of at the time of her death. However, Lavelle was not her first MLM rodeo. Amway was. Now, if you have not watched the other two videos that I made about her MLM connection, it might make more sense to you if you do, and then come back to this one. Considering that she joined in her early 20s, I suspect the dream that MLM sells to you and all of the tactics that were used on her changed her fundamentally. I mean, she believed she believed in the dream so much that she supported other people who were members of other multi-level marketing companies such as LuLaRoe, Monet, Young Living. This video is an attempt to share with you the impact MLM can have on people. Some people have lost everything because they believed so much. This video is based on my experience, research, and opinion. Please, please, please do your own research, especially if you're considering joining an MLM or if you're in one and you're starting to have some doubts. It's not you. You are not the problem. It's the structure. I found this clip of the 2008 Amway Convention. Now, Shanann was there at this convention. She was part of Amway back when she was 24. In 2011, Shanann was still affiliated with Amway, as is evident here with the makeup and skincare party that she held Saturday, July 30th, 2011. In case, if you don't know, the Amway skincare and makeup line is called Artistry. This was after she found out that she had lupus. And for this event, she was donating 20% of the proceeds to the Lupus Foundation. 
I am wondering how much did she sell here? And I'm also wondering, did this tactic work to connect with the condition, her health and everything to the MLM and to the products? I mean, I tried something similar with rescue dogs back when I was with Beachbody and it was a total flop. I just wonder, did it work or did it not work? The last association that I find is back in 2013 when Shanann was 29 and she's asking someone if they use artistry and like I told you Amway is artistry. If Shanann ever quit Amway the date is unknown. Her start and stop date of the other MLMs that she was involved with excluding LaBelle Thrive is also unknown. All we can do is go by, you know, the post that she had, like when you can find mention of these companies. Now, recently I watched a video where she was putting on makeup and to me, it looked like she was using the brand Mascara, which has been rebranded as Saint, S-E-I-N-T, which is another MLM. And I actually did a couple of videos on mascara but it was like this compact of makeup and the only kind of makeup i've ever seen look like that was with mascara when it was called mascara i did find a number of images with young living packages and shanann also shared her favorite essential oils which were young living the night shanann was killed she attempted to make a purchase of monet monet is also an mlm and it's like hair stuff what she spent on multi-level marketing products combined with the expense to be active, the samples, the giveaways, the prizes, and all of her travel expenditures, it's really not known. Her life was an illusion of wealth and success because they were drowning in debt at the time of her death. And only two years prior, they had filed for bankruptcy. The mission statement of Amway is simple help people live better lives. Huh, that sounds a lot like beach bodies, which is help people achieve their goals and enjoy healthy, fulfilling lives. Honestly, all MLM mission statements will be some sort of version of what Amway's is. Now, in terms of profit, we see right here, very few people generate a profit. Only about 0.3% of MLM members will ever turn a profit. In the early years, it is unlikely that you will make any real money from Amway. You might earn a commission check or two, but chances are your income will be less than your expenses. I thought it was important to share with you how the distributors for Amway are told they can make money. They're actually called IBOs, um, independent business owners. And if you've ever heard anybody that's a part of an MLM say how they're a business owner, it's their business, all of that is put into their head by the company. They don't make that stuff up, but in fact, you're really an independent contractor. There's also the ABO, and ABO is an Amway business owner. You can make money with Amway through retail sales. There's also bonuses and there's also all these growth incentives. That's the thing with any multi-level marketing company. If you look at the compensation plan, it's typically, well, everyone that I've ever seen, highly, highly complex and extremely confusing. And that's all done intentionally, in my opinion. Amway also has these things called Amway Motivational Organizations or AMOs. Each AMO is basically someone you sign up under and then they become your sponsor. Shanann lived in North Carolina back in 2008. And you know who else lived in North Carolina and had an AMO? Actually the top one, Amway's top distributor, Dexter Yeager. Some revere him and others refer to him as a criminal. His AMO is called Internet. Now Dexter is no longer with us. He died in 2019. He was one of the most successful distributors in Amway, the company that used multi-level marketing to sell everything from soap and cosmetics to a way of life. From Charlotte, he once oversaw half of Amway's global sales of 2 million people. His distributors sold $2 billion worth of products a year. 
one multi-level marketing site said he earned up to $12 million as recently as a decade ago. Dexter's estimated earnings between 2010 and 2011 is 12 to $14 million. According to another site, it's estimated that his lifetime earnings with Amway is $460 million. Now, it's my guess that Shanann met someone who was part of Dexter's organization, and she joined because she thought she could start her own beauty business by selling Amway's artistry brand. Based on the post I uncovered, it looks like she was active selling Amway's artistry makeup for about six years. Well, the thing is, when you are part of Amway, you don't just sell things. There's a lot of hidden costs, just like with any other MLM, which all serve to keep you believing that you too can have a life of luxury. And who knows, maybe Shanann sold enough of this artistry makeup, you know, to buy that first house of hers that was in North Carolina back when she was working for Dirty South, but I kind of doubt it. In the first video I did about Shanann and her affiliation with multi-level marketing, I shared two different income disclosure statements, one for ItWorks, which she had been a part of, and the other one was with Lavelle. According to Amway, the gross income for an active IBO, aka distributor, is $207. Approximately 48% of all IBOs were active. U.S. IBOs were considered active in months in 2016 when they attempted to make a retail sale or presented the Amway IBO compensation plan or received bonus money or attended an Amway or IBO meeting. If someone sustained that level of activity every month for a whole year, their annualized income would be $2,484. Of course, not every IBO chooses to be active every month. Gross income means the amount received from retail sales minus the cost of goods sold plus monthly bonuses and cash incentives. It excludes all annual bonuses and cash incentives and all non-cash awards, which may be significant. There may also be significant business expenses, mostly discretionary, that may be greater in relation to income in the first years of operation. This graph is very telling. Most, if they earned anything, it was under $20,000 annually. But we don't know if this is gross or net, and we don't know how much they spent on the product and the various other supposed optional expenses. One of the things that people who speak out against the structure of multi-level marketing is the churn rate. Those at the top have to keep bringing in people at the bottom. So take a look at this table. As you can see, it's close to 50% of the IBOs that were new in 2019. Early on, we read that countless ABOs have achieved success. Naturally, this claim is at this point unsubstantiated, but that's just how MLMs roll. The theme continues when we read that the ABOs are an expanding force. A few more pages of reading, we found some interesting numbers which explain the change in Amway ABOs between 2018 and 2019. We took it upon ourselves to apply a little math and produced the table below. In 2019, Amway recruited a total of 120,000 new ABOs, which was an increase of 48.43% of the total ABO force. While this, might, while this might sound like a great result, it isn't. Amway started in 1959 and is more than 60 years old. It seems very odd that such a large portion of their ABO force joined just last year. It starts to make more sense as the math continues, even though 123,000 new ABOs joined during the year, the total number of Amway ABOs only went up by 6,900 in 2019. So 
48.43% of ABOs joined, but the total only went up by 2.72%. While they say it was a good year, to us, it's not looking so great. The only way to explain this disparity in ABO growth is that the 116,100 ABOs quit Amway in 2019. So even though countless ABOs achieve success, 45.71% of ABOs quit Amway in 2019. We've learned from the Amway documents we've found is that if you become an ABO, you can expect to earn less than $50 a week before expenses and will probably lose money. If you are a great salesperson and build a downline, then it's more likely that around half of them will quit every year. So you'll need to recruit extra hard to keep them with the churn. If you're thinking about joining Amway or any other MLM, we strongly suggest considering all other options before committing. Let that last sentence sink in because it's very telling about other so-called business opportunities such as Lavelle and the others that Shanann joined because I've stated how hard she had to work and hold her rank and to keep on bringing in people. And here you have some more evidence. Amway has all kinds of specialized words which can be called loaded language. Here is one toolbox, an optional box of business support materials, which a person purchases when he first becomes a distributor, usually the same night he purchases the business kit. This toolbox contains a set of six to eight audio tapes, a set of 15 plans, the Profiles of Success book, two Amway positive business books, and some sales and marketing literature. The entire cost is about $200 to $250 and is generally considered the second or sometimes the first business expense. If a person can only afford either the business kit or the toolbox, the upline will tell him to purchase the toolbox and rather than become an official distributor by completing the paperwork in the business kit, a person has just given their money to the upline and for items not covered by Amway's satisfaction guaranteed as well. Since Shanann sold artistry, I would think she would have gotten a toolbox as well. And this is just one of the many hidden expenses she faced. This post comes from Reddit, and yes, I know it's Reddit, but many people can go there just anonymously and share different things. And there is r slash anti MLM where people do share their experience in multi-level marketing. And a lot of times people are extremely embarrassed, extremely just saddened by the, all the guilt that they feel from all the time they wasted and the money they wasted when they joined an MLM. So this is one outlet for them. This isn't even a complete list, but these were the big ticket items on the year. This doesn't include buying products for myself that I never would actually buy otherwise. These are just the costs for running the business with a spouse and kids. Making this spreadsheet made me sick. The total represents nearly 25% of my average household income for the time I was involved. I blew over $80,000 on this and nobody tried to stop me. One, I don't have a spreadsheet with the profit, but it varied wildly. My best months were probably around $1,000, but I think I only had two to three of those in the course of 10 years. Worst months were obviously zero, but I'd say the average was two to three hundred dollars a month in my pocket. That's profit off retail sales and volume based bonus received. That's not money after expenses. Notice that most of the line items are training related and have nothing to do with actually generating sales. There wasn't a single year I made more than I spent. I quit four years ago, but still keep paying the nearly $69 to stay registered with Amway. If I dropped out of that, it would break my parents' hearts. Frankly, it's worth $69 a year to not have to deal with the fallout 
edit. I, when I say profit here, I'm talking about gross profit, not net profit. I probably only had net profit on 10 of the 120 months I was in. Just wow. And now I'm going to share with you the spreadsheet this person is referring to. The three main categories of all of these expenses fall into meetings and functions, business building tools, and dues subscriptions, which each month totaled over $8,000. I wonder what Shanann spent over those six years when she sold artistry. Now, I already went over how that car bonus works. Shanann had to qualify each month to receive that bonus of $800. Her leased Lexus was $600 a month. In 2018, they did not have two leased cars. Chris drove a fleet truck from Anadarko. That was his employer. If she was able to hold his rank, since they did not put money towards a leased car, then they would get $300. But that's if she could keep him with the needed qualifications and keep herself with the qualifications she needed. And we don't know if she did that for, you know, other people in their family that were underneath her, underneath him, because that is something very common in MLM to sign up your husband, your sister, your mother, your father, your brother, you get the picture. And yet when asked about the car bonus under her post, she tells someone, we'll message you. They pay us monthly for our cars. For the average bear who is unfamiliar with how multi-level marketing works, I would think that would be extremely deceptive. Congratulating someone who ranks up was very common for Shanann in all of her posts. I mean, recognition overall in multi-level marketing, that is a very common thing because you look at those people who seem to be doing so well and you're like, oh, I want to do that. And she was so happy to congratulate her husband, even though she was the one that was doing all the work behind the scenes. Like the Reddit OP, Shanann had expenses she was not disclosing. She was struggling to keep it all afloat, so to speak. Here is another post about somebody else's experience with Amway. And by the way, my sources will be in the description, so you can go there and look for yourself. After I left Amway and eventually began blogging, I learned about the total income. As an IBO, I was told that the tools had no profits. Profits were simply reinvested to pay for functions. I know that Amway reported that the average diamond earns about $150,000 a year from Amway. Diamond is the rank you're trying to get to. There's ranks above that, but diamond is, quote, like the rank. Of course, business structure and the number of months a diamond qualifies is a factor. See that qualification? You have to keep on making sure that you hit that same rank. A founder's pin can earn significantly more than a non-founder's pin. However, I also know that a founder's diamond or above is the exception and not the rule. Thus, a diamond will earn Amway bonuses and volume from downline. The reason why a diamond apparently seemingly never quits is because they need to keep working and replacing downline who quits. Seems that about two thirds of IBOs never retain after a year and 95% of IBOs are gone in less than five years. With that kind of attrition, you basically can never walk away from Amway and sit on the beaches while the cash rolls in. What I didn't know as an IBO was that my upline was earning income from tools. I'm sure they were earning several dollars a month from the standing orders, voicemail, and some other tools. I believe the bulk of the tool income is from the functions where there is a huge potential to earn significant cash. Nobody can pinpoint exactly how much someone earns from tools because you would have to know the breakdown of profit from each tool and you would need to know how many diamonds and other pin levels get a share of the income. It is my informed opinion that a diamond would make about two thirds of their income from tool sales and the rest from Amway bonuses. That toolkit Shanann most likely bought was a way to make money off of people who signed up. Amway has come under fire for this type of deception. Compare this story to Shanann. Can you see why she had to keep on doing those Facebook lives and push 
so darn hard all the time. I'm telling you, it's utterly exhausting. I base that opinion on the concept that the tools have a much larger profit center than the Amway products. Amway bonus is about 33% or so, but is split up in layers. The tools can have several 100% profit with fewer people getting a share. For example, a major function might cost $35 to $40 per person, while the uplines charge $125 and up for it. A CD might cost 50 cents to make, but upline charges $7.50 or $2.50 if you pay a monthly membership fee of $50. Based on some former diamond statements, it is fair to conclude that a diamond might make only a third of their income from diamonds. Does that seem fair when diamonds push tools on their downline? Now, not all MLMs do this, but there are a lot of hidden costs. This is what is known as the Amway tool scam. Okay, I'm really sorry that this table is so dinky, but it's the best that I could do. And I also wanted to show you all those different, you know, ranks that you have with an Amway. This table is about a particular Amway function called free enterprise. If there were 35,000 distributors and 41 percent of them are active, you can expect that there are five people who can make it to the rank of diamond. Remember, I told you diamond is the rank that everyone's trying to get to when they're part of Amway. The red arrow points out where in the Amway ranking system diamond sits. And yet everyone is told to go for diamond. The likelihood of reaching this level is extremely small, no matter how hard you work. And no matter how much you work on your mindset. Function, also referred to as a major function. A large meeting held from Friday night to Sunday morning, which includes speeches from diamond distributors, a light band, usually Dreamer, and a few motivational professional speakers. Such functions include Dream Weekend, Free Enterprise Weekend, Family Reunion Weekend, Leadership Weekend, and others usually held at a convention center or sports stadium to accommodate a very large number. Free Enterprise Weekend may have as many as 30 to 35,000 people in attendance, and past speakers included Zig Ziglar, Les Brown, President Ronald Reagan, Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich, and Amway Crown Ambassador Dexter Yeager. The function usually costs between $150 to $250 per person for a ticket, plus the expense of a hotel room, meals, and travel time. And if you've seen the other two videos I've done on Shanann, you will note how many times she was traveling. All of these events she was going to, they weren't free. Not all of it. Some of it she earned the getaways. You could earn some, but not everything was necessarily paid for. They never are. They always try to squeeze as much money out of you as possible. TCT is the crowning touch. It is a designation on many tools that are designed to help distributors market artistry products. And that's what I am guessing that um, Shanann got. This is internet. This is, you know, Dexter Yeager's. This is his ABO. Book of the month, bomb. Considered another tool. This is a monthly positive business book the upline sells to their group. Sometimes this book is available at local discount bookstores for less than a distributor would pay his upline. Sometimes the book is written by an upper level distributor such as Dexter Yeager, which means that the book has little value outside of the Amway business, usually designated BK on tools list. Now, as you will see, Shanann was reading books. Where did she get these books? When did she get these books? It's unknown to me, but I have a feeling she had quite the library of positive thinking books, of law of attraction, of all of this personal development that multi-level marketing kind of shoves at you. Now that you know how Amway defines function, this might give you insight as to why Shanann attended so many different local meetings, getaways, conferences, leadership trainings, etc. Whatever else that was offered, you know, if it was there, then she, so was she. Shanann went to it all, so it seems. It was ingrained in her from her days with Amway. That's what I am concluding from all of this. She learned that she better go to everything. 
from Amway because of all of that that's pushed at you when you're a part of it. These events are actually very carefully orchestrated to keep people coming back and keep people believing in the dream. I found this book that was created by Dexter Geyer. Remember, he is one of those um, former Amway Diamonds way up there. He was like the top dude. I have a sneaking suspicion that Shanann probably had this book in her toolkit. After all, what Dexter said was considered gold to those who were members of Amway. Go get her is a book contained in the toolbox that tells the story of a man who must retrieve a blue vase to be promoted to a new job. In order to get the blue vase, however, the man must overcome an impossible number of obstacles. Since the man does not give up and eventually does retrieve the blue vase, he is given the name Go-Getter. This is another one of those books that Amway suggests you read. And can you see how the theme of that would keep people still pushing, still thinking they're going to get to Diamond. Do you see how that could have worked on Shanann? Books like this tie into the overall fantasy of hard work, never stop, and you'll make it to the top. Stinking thinking, the derogatory name for a distributor's condition when he makes negative comments about life or the Amway business. In the very first video I did about Shanann, I mentioned how negative thinking is just not allowed. Well, here you have it, straight from the original, no stinking thinking. And if there is no stinking thinking, that means when you have a problem, it's up to you to figure it out, even when everything you try doesn't work. In that case, you are just not doing it the right way. You're doing it wrong and you just need to keep going. Stinking thinking loser, the derogatory name for a person who has stinking thinking and who has quit the Amway business. After all, distributors claim only winners build the business. The phrase right there, I have a feeling Shanann might have heard it. And, you know, it was just in her head and she couldn't really combat it. It was just, you know, she was just didn't want to be that stinking thinking loser. She didn't want to be a quitter. In her mind, in my opinion, she believed the only way you fail is if you stop trying. And she wasn't about to do that. She wasn't going to stop because she was going to get to the top. This is an excerpt from the Charlotte Observer from 1995. Jaeger motivational tape reel in cash. Inspiring Amway sales is goal. Critics question the message profit second of three part. The hub of Dexter Yeager's worldwide empire is a bustling factory on South Boulevard. The factory doesn't produce Amway soaps or cleansers. It cranks out millions of motivational tapes each year for the Charlotte-based Amway Magnates network of distributors. Within its red brick walls, Yeager's positive thinking message is captured in cassettes. Dream big. Be persistent and consistent. Avoid stinking thinking. Notice the positive thinking. You are told over and over and over again that you must have the right thoughts. And I'm sure Shanann heard that again and again and again. The tapes are the linchpin in the Jaeger family's motivation building enterprise called Internet Service Corp. The $35 million a year spent off of Jaeger's Amway business generates consistent profits and persistent problems. Jaeger's network of 1 million distributors, Amway's largest, provides a ready-made market for Jaeger motivation sideline. Jaeger says his support system strengthens Amway sales, but ex-distributors argue that its central focus is selling to the sales force. Some Amway dropouts say that Jaeger's system's psychological impact is more subtle. They say it promotes some practices that seem to conflict with official Amway policies. And the endless stream of motivation aids keep marginal salespeople believing in the face of poor results. That success is just around the bend. The tapes and books kept me brainwashed, said Bruce Rosner of Stone Mountain, Georgia, who spent 13 years in Jaeger's Amway Network. They get you in his frame of mind that you need to feed on the materials in order to survive. 
Roser said the barrage of motivational age put him in performance trap where he was obsessed about achieving, but felt mired in failure. Do you think Shanann may have felt like that as well? After all, she spent six years in Amway and a total of 11 years in multi-level marketing. Do you think anything like that was going on in her? Something I didn't realize until I saw a video where Shanann was trying to, I think it was Cece, she was trying to teach Cece the hand signal for Lavelle. And guess what? Lavelle is not the only one that has a hand signal. Here's an example from OneCoin. And pictured here are four of OneCoin's former top leaders. OneCoin is a cryptocurrency MLM. On the far left is one of the Steinkiller brothers. And peeking from behind him is Kari Walrus. Seated is Yuha Perilia. Over Yuha's left shoulder is Igor E. Alberts. It is alleged that Yuha was making $4 million a month with OneCoin. Now, I've done videos on the Stein Killers, on Kari, on Igor, and all of them just, you know, each one is worse than the other. And doesn't it just feel very cult-like to you? I mean, it's just, it's really kind of creepy, that whole hand signal thing, because, you know, you can, like, show other people that you're part of the club, so to speak. OneCoin and Lavelle are not alone in making things look rather cultish and odd. This MLM is Organa Gold. Many of the top one coin leaders were actually poached from Organa Gold. I mean, don't you get kind of, you know, secret society vibes or something? I'm kind of thinking it's, it just, it just feels a bit, you know, weird to me. I wanted to share this with you because that whole feeling of very, you know, cultish and secret society. Comparisons between Amway and Freemasonry is endless. Professor Blakely's Amway report explains at length that exactly as in the Mafia, although secondary members of the DeVos and Van Andel clans, particularly wives and children, have ostensibly occupied the highest positions of management in the Amway organization when they were subjected to detailed questioning in court, they were unable to give intelligible answers to the most simple questions regarding the functioning of the corporate structure they were supposed to run. Up until recently, it has been a matter of public record that both the founders of Amway were 33rd degree Freemasons. This information was widely available on the net without any challenge to its authenticity for many years. At one time, the Amway Corp acquired a Masonic temple in Ada, Michigan and transformed and expanded into a hotel, but retaining the Masonic facade. Apparently, it is absolutely forbidden by the ancient rules of Freemasonry for any sacred building or buildings to be transferred into profane hands or to any association run exclusively by profane individuals. Amway owns jargon has borrowed Masonic keywords and images, a prime example being how adherents always speak of building the business, i.e. recruiting, and of visualizing dreams and goals in life, a form of secular prayer used within fraternal secret societies. Amway networks correspond to Masonic chapters. In Amway, everything and everyone is systematically divided into negative versus positive. In Freemasonry, it's sacred versus profane. Amway diamonds correspond to grand masters, direct distributors to fellows of the craft. The highest initiates wear emblems, particularly on rings, as external signs of their moral and intellectual authority, but only to fellow initiates. Just as in Freemasonry, the object of all Amway initiates is to climb in parallel pyramids of obedience and secret knowledge in order to attain a place in a form of future secure utopian existence that is exemplified by the highest initiates who are the perfect role models for the lower initiates to copy. The list of obvious comparisons between Amway and Freemasonry is endless. Interestingly, it has now become the policy of the Amway Ministry of Truth to deny that the remaining founder of the organization is or was a Freemason. 
as the steadfast robot is programmed by the Amway Ministry of Truth, his latest reaction is hardly surprising. David Brer. David has a blog called MLM, The American Dream Made Nightmare. David Brer, just like Robert Fitzpatrick and Doug Brooks, is an expert in multi-level marketing. He has been studying and writing about it for many years. Robert Lifton interviewed American servicemen who were held captive during the Korean War. He also interviewed 15 Chinese who left their country after being indoctrinated into Chinese universities. Chapter 22 of Robert Lifton's book, Thought Reform in the Psychology of Totalism, outlines eight criteria for thought reform. You may refer to this as brainwashing. That's typically what people think about but it is everything that Lifton talks about in his book. What is described in Lifton's book is not unlike being part of any MLM. The various events these companies hold act to further cement the narrative that anyone can do this. Just follow the simple steps laid out for you. And if you are not having success in your belief in yourself and this opportunity just simply isn't strong enough, the only way that you will fail is if you quit. And yet, they will say things like this. Well, it's not for everyone, which totally contradicts that anyone can do this. If you saw my other videos about Shanann's experience in MLM, then you may recall the number of events she went to. In the discovery documents, we are told she traveled for her business about every other month. Do you not think that this impacted her beliefs? When you attend these events, you, you get kind of like on this high and you pick up the energy from other people. It's just this fervor and then it kind of dies down, but then it's recharged the next time you go to an event. Undue influence may be defined as influence by which a person is induced to act otherwise than by their own free will or without adequate attention to the consequences. Being part of an MLM, you come to believe that you have some sort of sacred knowledge. A big part of MLM is duplication or the cloning of people to act and behave in the exact same way. And you will act in ways to protect the company. For instance, anyone who speaks out, such as myself, is characterized as a hater. It's a black, white, us versus them. And you will feel justified in your behavior because it's taught to you over and over and over each time a so-called leader speaks. There is so much more that can be said about this. And I've discussed a lot of it in other videos that I've created, as have other creators in the anti-MLM sphere. And also those who have gone before all of us and speak out about the destructive nature of multi-level marketing. Okay, sit back and just watch this little short video. It includes um, quotes that are from the Amway founders, um, Richard DeVos and Jay Van Andel, and also some of the top Amway distributors. And interlaced are some of Shanann's pictures.
What did you think of these quotes? A new life of excitement, promise, profit, and hope. Best opportunity, negative influence, built on God's laws. I think these quotes help illustrate how the prosperity gospel is woven into the fabric of this type of business opportunity. And did you see all the product that Shanann showcased? Remember, not all of it was free. She and Chris both used Thrive products. And so did their parents. But were they promoters? And did she do inventory loading to hold rank? You see, you earn points on these products and you need these points to maintain a rank. And if people dropped off, I think it's very likely that she bought the inventory herself, you know, to keep up that appearance. My friend Monica Hayworth recently made a video all about inventory loading. So I'll put a link to that in the description. To keep the illusion of success, people involved in multi-level marketing will buy inventory. I'm not saying that Shanann did, but I'm saying it's very possible. Plus, we also don't know how many MLMs that she was still active in at the time of her death. But we can surmise that she was very dedicated to showcasing the lifestyle that MLM promotes. All MLM companies refer to personal development. It's just part of the package. The book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill is one of the most common books in multi-level marketing. Just about everybody's either heard of it, they've read it or something. And I have a feeling that Shanann, that book collection, I, I bet it was something. Now that I've shared all of this with you, do you see how being part of Amway, going to the various functions and filling her head with only positive thoughts about multi-level marketing for six years while she was in Amway before she joined another MLM probably impacted and shaped how Shanann thought. Had it not been for multi-level marketing, I wonder how life would have gone for her. I wonder what she could have accomplished. What do you think her parents said about the various MLMs she joined? What about Chris's parents? Were they on board? Were they not on board? Do you think that she signed them up as promoters too? Do you think Chris believed in all of this as much as she did? How do you think being part of not one but several MLMs impacted their finances? What kind of stress do you think they were under because of the belief in the multi-level marketing fantasy? I just really wonder, what do you think would have happened if Shanann would have decided to go back to work at the children's hospital and just give up multi-level marketing altogether. Had she not been in multi-level marketing, I don't think we'd even know her name. And we wouldn't have this horrific tragedy that is so very unsettling. I fully believe that all the things multi-level marketing put into her head caused her to push so hard. Now I'm going to put a link to a paper that Dr. John Taylor wrote, and it's often it's his research that the FTC refers to about, you know, you've probably heard that 99% of people fail. Well, it's his research. So there's going to be a link to all of that if you want to check it out. Shanann, I am so very sorry that you and your children's lives were cut short. Every time I watch one of your videos, I just, I just think it can't be true. Surely you're at home. Your home's not vacant. Surely it's just all a bad dream. Surely the girls are running and playing. Surely Nico is with them. But I know all of this is real and I can't imagine the pain that your loved ones feel. For those of you who knew Shanann, I am so very sorry she's not here. And anyone involved in multi-level marketing, I hope you take time to reflect and to rethink. You may call me a hater, and I know you're trying to do so. The business opportunity is a trap, and I don't want you to waste any more time or any more money on a dream that most likely isn't going to come true. There's nothing wrong with having a regular job. There's nothing wrong 
with living in a small house. There's nothing wrong with enjoying simple things in life. The lavish lifestyle that MLM puts in front of you, it's not what you really need to be happy. Take time and really think about what makes you happy. Do you want to pour so much of yourself into an opportunity to end up broke and broken? I hope not. I really, really, really hope you don't. And when you're ready, if you leave, I'm here. I know it's hard to come to terms that it was all an illusion, but you're not alone. There are many of us who have left and we're working on healing our wounds and you can do it too. I hope you found this helpful. Remember, you're beautiful and I love you. Thank you.